So the passage will be from 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 27. So I started thinking, unity. This is something I know I've learned a little bit about for since I started my strongest part of my walk with the Lord. I've started since then learned about unity. So we'll start in scripture and then I'll Thought maybe whenever I'm led. The body is a unit. Through it is made up of many parts, and through all of its parts are many. They form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. And if, I, and if the ear should say, because I am not a, an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of the hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in the fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as He wanted them. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it, were, as, as it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I do not need you. On the contrary, the, those parts of the body seem to be weaker or indispensable. And the parts that, think, that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there are so that there should be no divisions in the body, that its parts have should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, each part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now we are the whole now we are the body of Christ. Each one of a you is a part of it. Now so I was thinking when I came to this topic, I was like, unity. Okay. Right. At the point, um, my unity starts before I started going into multiple churches. My unity starts actually when I started going to Calvary. When, when my strongest part of my walk, my teaching started as a result of me doing door to door and the people in it wanting a Bible study. So when I first started learning about unity is when I stopped going to church with my buddy I went door to door with and because we were united in Christ and going in the name of Jesus rather than the name of our church, we were united and have kept going. Well, it started teaching me that it ain't about what church we go to. It's about us serving Christ. It's about us coming together for Him. So, time went on. Started going to Crossroads on Wednesdays in my home church on Sundays. And um, I've been trying to get this person, in, a certain person, getting them into church. And I was talking to this guy at work. Because this person admitted to being a church hopper, and I was like, well, they're church hoppers, and then people are hard to get into one church. And the guy at work, he's of the world, he ain't Christian, and he's like, well, you're a church hopper. I'm like, no, no, I'm not. I'm synced into multiple churches. So it was by him that I really, in this direction of this, me being moved in this way, really started to be teaching this way about this my personal experience rather than off my notes. So I started thinking, no, what I'm doing 
isn't done by people at all. People at all. Most people stay to their church, and that's where they work, and that's where they go. But with me, I have the opportunity to work with more than one church. In fact, um, I've had the opportunity to kind of be a bridge to get these two, two of these churches involved with this today. You know, it, one of the things the world is disgusted by and why they don't come to Christ is the division in the church today. Is the fact that we bicker over the littlest things. You know, the more since the past year, um, I started getting involved in this life group at a different church, and since then I started listening to sermons, and I was like, well, what other local pastors can put their sermons online? So, of course, all these, most of them are different denominations than mine. Most of the time, there's agreement. Actually, one time I taught Sunday night, it was based on the view of mine, contrary to what the guy actually spoke, but I still listen to him. No division, really. It's just doctrinal difference there. But through listening to these different denominations preaching, while there is our distinctions, oftentimes them ain't even brought up until we bicker and bring them up. The division is brought up by us. You know, I, and then I was driving to work one day thinking, I was like, you know, the thing that causes division the most isn't our doctrinal differences. It's the fact that we don't humble ourselves. And I started thinking of the disciples. Twelve different men. Some of them were fishermen. Some of them were rebels. One of them was a tax collector. They were from different backgrounds. Outside any format, they would have not got along. But through Jesus, they got along. They knew who to look to when things came about. It's no different for us. We come from different backgrounds, and there's, there's going to be division. But we overcome that through Christ. We get past it through Christ. We don't let the division to keep us from doing things together. Because the things I've learned going door to door with my buddy from a different church, it means more to them people. Once they realize, okay, they don't go to church together. What's the deal? It speaks more to them. The fact that we come together than us going out in a part of our church. It means more to them. And Christ's name is, stands louder. The fact that we go out in His name rather than just the name of our church. It, so when we stand for Christ and allow the division to wipe away where we can work together, we can do more things. We can witness to the world better. We can stand stronger by the world. We can overcome division and makes this one of the strongest statements to the world out there. It's saying, okay, what their, what their difference is, Christ is bigger than them. What they've been through, Christ is bigger than them. And it makes them realize that, okay, there's something bigger out there than what we follow. And in a way, us being united speaks a greater testimony than us just simply coming to Christ. Because us coming to Christ is our personal testimony. But when we come together and work together, that's all of our testimonies combined. The fact that you came from this path, I came from that path, and we come together, and this is where Christ is taking us. And that speaks to the world. And that's what God wants us to do. You don't want... While He does have a purpose of us being out in our own particular churches, He doesn't want us to stay there. He wants us to come together. It's one church. It's one body. You know, and while we each have our own different services and different congregations and able to reach people that way, we oftentimes neglect how we are able to reach people together. And I feel this whole purpose of this gathering together is so we can start focusing more on a collective rather than an individual church. 